welcome back friends we will continue our study of the natural vegetation in this part 2 and here we are going to study the the types of natural vegetation in detail in the previous lecture we got you people got an idea of how the natural vegetation is distributed in india now we will study the type of a natural vegetation what are the climatic conditions associated some important species the name of which i will give and these are the names you should note it down very properly and some of the important states in which this natural vegetation is found. Take out your atlas, have a look at the states I gave and see the general the questions are here are very simple, very generalized. The only thing is you just should have an idea of the map of India and thus it will help you in solving the natural vegetation. I will start again repeating what I what we did in the previous lecture that is the natural vegetation in India consists of tropical evergreen and the semi evergreen forest. Then it consists of the tropical deciduous forest. It includes dry deciduous and the moist deciduous region. Then it includes tropical thorn forest. Tropical thorn forest include comes in both the parts. Then it includes mountain forest and littoral and swamp forest. It includes the littoral and the swamp forest. So this is the general idea for the natural vegetation in India. Now first we, will, we are going to study in India what are the, that is the first topic that is the tropical evergreen and the semi evergreen forest. You can see this forest tropical evergreen and the semi evergreen forest lie in the areas of very heavy rainfall. So lie, they lie in this regions of heavy rainfall. They lie in the regions of a very heavy rainfall. So let us study in detail this forest. So the tropical evergreen and the semi evergreen forest. Evergreen and semi evergreen forest. Now one thing you also note down the whenever I tell some important point if I am stressing on some points make sure that it feed, it gets feeded in your memory and you note down that point. We will first start with the study of the tropical evergreen forest and then we will study the tropical semi evergreen forest. Now where are this tropical evergreen and the semi evergreen forest found? The tropical evergreen and the semi evergreen forests are found in the regions of heavy rainfall. That is the regions which receive more than 200 centimeters of average annual rainfall you will have tropical evergreen and the semi evergreen forest but in this the tropical evergreen forest the distribution it is found or the climate required here is when rainfall exceeds or the rainfall is greater than 250 centimeters rainfall is greater than the 250 centimeters that is the rainfall exceeds 257 centimeters then this should have high range of annual temperatures, high annual temperature. High range of annual temperature. How much high? The temperature should be around 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius to 27 degree Celsius. Then the third criteria is, these are the regions which should have high humidity high humidity which exceeds 77 percent of humidity it should exceed the amount of humidity that is which should exceed 77 percent of humidity now why are this known as ever evergreen forest there are two conditions which are required for the growth of vegetation. General, generally, these are two conditions, especially in the tropical regions or anywhere in the world. One of the input for the growth of vegetation, if this is a vegetation, where for vegetation growth, that is Vg, two inputs are required. One is temperature 
and the other is moisture and the other is moisture if there is a high temperature throughout the year and high moisture throughout the year the trees in such conditions grow throughout the year if this is a land the trees are getting high amount of moisture the trees are getting high amount of temperature why the tree is getting high amount of moisture because the average annual rainfall is high because of high annual temperature the second input that is the temperature is also very high and therefore the trees grow throughout the year because the trees grow throughout the year therefore the forest looks ever green on other hand if the moisture is not available if this moisture is not available the trees which are here in this region they will start shedding their leaves so the trees look bare in the regions of no moisture if this is the branch the tree will look bare in the region of no sufficient moisture we call such bare trees which shed their leaves or which throw away their leaves why do they shed their leaves because they have to conserve moisture the leaves through the process of evapotranspiration that is evaporation and transpiration will lose the water content and because there is no water throughout the year the trees have to shed their leaves during the month of the dry summer season that is during the month when the water is less such the trees in hindi are known as patjhad patte jhad dena or in english these are known as deciduous tree so this trees deciduous trees during the dry season look bare look naked but on other hand the evergreen trees during the all throughout the year they are full of leaves and therefore they are known as evergreen they are known as evergreen so due to high amount of humidity and high amount of moisture the trees grow throughout the year because the two both the two inputs are available the trees grow throughout the year this regions have growing season throughout the year they have the growing season throughout the year so the trees do not shed their leaves altogether at a same time because some trees have one different growing season some trees have different other growing season and therefore the growing season is throughout the year therefore the region the trees look evergreen and hence we call this as evergreen forest hence we call this forest as evergreen forest hence we call this forest as an evergreen forest so repeat with me rainfall is high humidity and temperature is high so the growing season lasts throughout the year and therefore this forests are known as an evergreen forest now this tropical evergreen trees how they are let us look the there is high amount of growing season throughout the year therefore the productivity or the bio the productivity of this biome that is the tropical evergreen biome which is also found in the equatorial regions why because the equatorial regions receive rainfall throughout the year is very very high and as a result the trees yahan pe there is a competition among the trees because the trees are growing throughout the year there is a competition for water and also because the leaves are ever green through leaves which process operates through that process the trees intake carbon dioxide and give out oxygen that process is known as the process of photosynthesis so because the process of the photosynthesis require high amount of sunlight so the trees yahan pe because there is a competition for the sunlight the tree grows for a very greater height the trees are 
grow at a greater height. Now all the trees in this region obviously cannot reach the greater height. There are some of the trees which grow, go, grow up to a lesser height. There are some of the trees which grow up to a lesser height. So if you look from the top, from a plane, you will see as if this area has a thick layer, thick carpet, thick canopy of the trees. Why? Because the growing season is there throughout the year and hence the trees look evergreen. So now here, so this biggest tree have maximum amount of sunlight, uske baad the red color trees, then the sunlight does not reach the ground and because the sunlight here does not reach the ground, the undergrowth that is the grasses which grow, they are not very or the undergrowth is not extremely dense because the trees cannot reach the ground. So therefore, this, because the sunlight cannot reach the ground, the undergrowth is not very dense. It has a very sparse undergrowth or the undergrowth that is the growth from the ground is not well developed. Or less. So in this region, why the undergrowth is sparse or less? Because the sunlight does not reach the ground and because the sunlight does not reach the ground, what is the source of food for the trees? It is the photosynthesis. Sunlight is not reaching the ground, no photosynthesis. So therefore, the undergrowth is very dense in such regions. But at this, in this region, in some of the areas where there are some of the trees which are, cannot grow up to a greater height, the un they cannot undertake photosynthesis, but they have to survive. So, they, how they have adopted? There are some of the trees here which have become, they grow underground, but they have become carnivorous. They eat insects. They eat, they have become carnivorous plants. So, here you will have the presence of a carnivorous plants. The best example of a carnivorous plant is pitcher plant. The best example of a carnivorous plant is a pitcher plant. Is pitcher plant. So this in this region there is a pitcher plant. Now you see one more interesting fact. So in this region also there are some of the trees which cannot grow up to greater height. They also do not become carnivorous. Maybe because maybe because they believe more in herbivore. It, they, they cannot adopt themselves to become a carnivorous plant. So as a result of this, the trees then start climbing on other bigger trees and they reach upwards to get photosynthesis. So as a result, they start climbing on the bigger trees and they reach upwards to get photosynthesis. So the fourth criteria of this is, this region is rich in creepers. And the creepers in our geography, we will call them as epiphytes. As epiphytes. So this region, the tropical evergreen forest region or the evergreen forest region is rich in, creep, in creepers or in the epiphytic plants. These are the plants which climb on the larger trees. So how is the nature of this, car, this area? The nature of this area is that it is extremely dense. And therefore, because it is extremely dense, the people cannot go and live in this region. This jungles cannot be exploited for human resource because the trees are extremely dense and the trees are evergreen. Numerous species grow in this region and therefore, the evergreen forest anywhere in the world are known as the lungs of the world because they take out maximum number of carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. For example, in the Amazon river region along the equator, in the African region along the equator, 
this tropical evergreen forest is found everywhere jaha there is a tropical type of a climate ya equatorial type of a climate that is between 0 to 10 degree north and 0 to 10 degree south why it is found because we know in the equatorial regions the sun sun rays are more or less vertical and therefore the heat is high this region receives rainfall every day throughout the year because of thunderstorms or convectional rainfall so the moisture is high and therefore the trees are or the forests are evergreen and extremely dense you can see from my diagram it consists of one layer which is of a top layer then the middle layer then the ground layer which is very very less but there can be a presence of carnivorous plants so we say that it is undergrowth is less dense or sparse and it also consists of creepers or epiphytes that it is it climbs on the other part that is it climbs on this other trees so can i say that in this region the tropical evergreen forests are extremely dense these are extremely dense and arranged in different layers so can i say that these are stratified these are arranged in different layers that means they are well stratified that means they are well stratified so these are well stratified that means they are arranged in different layers the other example here is the other peculiarity is presence of epiphytes or climbers in this region presence of epiphytes or climbers in this region then also it has sparse undergrowth it has sparse undergrowth why why the sparse undergrowth because the sunlight does not reach the ground because the sunlight does not reach the ground these are extremely dense forests now this is well stratified means some of the trees here are so tall they have extremely tall trees then the tallest trees exceed in height having height greater than 60 meters so some of the trees are very very tall having height greater than the 60 meters in height that is crossing 60 meters in height some trees are the middle trees some trees are very less trees now what about the area what about the if if i clear this jungle if this is a jungle made up of different layers of the tree they are spreading out if this is the tropical evergreen forest we know that this is made up of different layers of the tree now one thing you know about the tropical evergreen forest is that it receives very very heavy rainfall what are these i have drawn these are the trees now what if i cut out the trees some portion of this forest i clear the forest what will be the growth in this region will this soil is will be very fertile or will this soil support another luxurious vegetation or will it not support a luxurious vegetation now if you clear this forest why these forests are very important why this forest which are known as the rainforest of the world 
which are known as the lungs of the world they are so important that we should stop them from deforestation we should conserve them because once we clear this forest then once we clear this forest there is this is the region of very heavy rainfall and as the rainfall is very heavy because of very very heavy rainfall we will see in the soil soils chapter that a process known as leaching operates leaching means from the if this is the layer of the soil that is this is the top layer of the soil it is having different nutrients because of very heavy rainfall most of the nutrients from the top layer of the soil is washed away by the water and the soil becomes red in color because almost all the nutrients are washed away and the top soil is rich only in iron and aluminum and the trees always grow on the top soil region the trees always grow on the top soil region so this iron and aluminum does not support good growth of the trees because these are the soils in this region in the tropical regions because of the process of leaching becomes deficient in nutrients that means it becomes a poor soil because of very heavy rainfall so on clearing the forest on clearing the forest remember due to heavy rainfall what operates in this region leaching operates in this region the process of leaching operates what is this process of leaching we will do that in the soil chapter and therefore the soil becomes poor in nutrients can you just survive on iron and aluminum no similarly the soils also cannot just survive on iron aluminum they require zinc they require phosphorus they require some micronutrients they require some some macronutrients and this what are this micro and macronutrients again i am not teaching here environment ecology do look in the environment ecology section that is what is macronutrients what are micronutrients so the soil is poor in nutrients and therefore the jungle is not dense at all the jungle is not dense at all now in india where are this forests found in india where are this forests found in india now to answer this question you just have to do nothing but open the map of rainfall in india that is we have done it i have given given you the page on the ncert so open that map and you will see the heavy rainfall that is greater than 250 cm of average annual rainfall occurs on the western side of the western ghat it occurs in the arunachal pradesh region you can see that a dark black color line was there in the map arunachal pradesh region in the upper assam region in the nagaland manipur mizoram tripura region and in andaman and nicobar island so in india just repeat with me regions of very heavy rainfall so where this region in india this forests are found on the western ghat region but which side of the western ghat eastern side or the western side of the western ghat which area receives very heavy rainfall in india the western side of the western ghats and the north east india especially arunachal pradesh yahan pe manipur mizoram tripura this region so this is found on the western side of the western ghat western side of the western ghats south of mumbai up to tip of india that is the entire state of kerala second remember 
the ado arunachal pradesh is higher up but arunachal pradesh receives heavy rainfall arunachal pradesh has extremely different type of a climate arunachal pradesh is one of the biodiversity hotspot region because you will see that it has evergreen forest you will see it has semi evergreen forest it has a moist deciduous forest that is the northeast india eastern himalayas so the that is the arunachal pradesh or we can say the northeastern part of india which includes arunachal which includes the state of upper assam nagaland manipur mizoram tripura which includes upper assam Upper Assam means the if we see the Brahmaputra Valley region, if we see this is the Arunachal Pradesh region. Arunachal Pradesh is the red shaded part. This is the state of Arunachal Pradesh. While the upper part of river Brahmaputra, the this is the Upper Assam region. Then comes the Lower Assam region. So the Upper Assam region, Manipur, Mizoram, Nagaland, Tripura. Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, now this is too much of actual data. How to remember this? Remember Arunachal Pradesh and the states of Northeast. When I say Arunachal Pradesh, which part of the Himalaya is it? Eastern Himalaya or the Western Himalaya? This is the Himalayas. Is it an Eastern Himalayas or the Western Himalayas? That means the Eastern Himalayas. Eastern Himalayas. When I say Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, that means the Purvanchal Hills or the Eastern Hill Complex, which we did from Patkai to Lushai Mountains. That is all this region. And the third part, do not forget one of the most biodiversity hotspots that is the Andaman and Nicobar Island. So the third part is Andaman and Nicobar Island. It is found in the Andaman and Nicobar Island region. So where in India? In India, on the western side of the western guard, in the southern part. So obviously it includes the state of Kerala. Then Northeast India, repeat with me, Arunachal Pradesh, Upper Assam region, the Purvanchal Hills or the Eastern Hill Complex, that is the Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram. If you want to remember Tripura, you remember. If you do not want to remember, don't worry. The questions will be focused on a generalized nature, that is the Eastern Himalayas or the state of Arunachal Pradesh or the state of Kerala and lastly the state of Andaman, uh, the Union Territory of Andaman and Nicobar. That is, this is the region of very heavy rainfall. That is why I say, as you are studying this natural vegetation with me, open the NCRT ka climate, uh, sorry, the annual rainfall ka map and then keep, you will be able to keep it more in mind. You will be able to remember it. Now, what about the important species of this region? The important species, do this important species which I am doing. The important species which are found in this are the tree species, not the animal species. We are not doing the fauna. We are doing the, sorry, we are, we are not doing the animals. We are doing only the trees of this region. So the important species here is rosewood. Rosewood. Mahogany. Rosewood. Mahogony, Ebony and one of must be your favorite that is a versatile bamboo which can grow in any regions. Bamboo. These are the important species of the tropical evergreen. Remember these are also the species of tropical semi-evergreen region. 
So evergreen region, regions of very heavy rainfall. Evergreen region, regions of high humidity. Well stratified, arranged in different layers with dominant, dominant, uh, dominance of very high trees, jinka height is greater than 60 meter. Then made up of regions of epiphytes, climbers and the carnivorous trees, sparse undergrowth. In India, in the western side, include from the state of Kerala, Kanyakumari region to the south of Mumbai, not to the not Mumbai or not to the northern part of Western Ghat, that is the, the southern part of Western Ghat. See here, I am not taking it for, to the point. Then the northeastern India, including Arunachal Pradesh. Why I am stressing on Arunachal Pradesh? Because the location of the Arunachal Pradesh is high, but still it has a tropical evergreen forest, and then the eastern hill complex, and lastly the biodiversity rich region of Andaman and Nicobar area and therefore in India there are two biodiversity hotspots one is Western Ghat region and one is the Himalayas why Himalayas is there we will see that Himalayas is a confluence zone of many different natural vegetation areas different climatic region areas and therefore yaha pe different types of natural vegetation and the animals which are adjusted to that natural vegetation are found. So it is also a biodiversity hotspot region. Now let us look at the tropical semi evergreen forest. Obviously, the semi evergreen means the mixture of evergreen trees and deciduous trees. So, or, or, or the dominant or the mixture of uh, some trees which can grow throughout the year or the some trees which cannot grow throughout the year. That is the why the word we say is semi evergreen. Now, why? Sem where will be these regions found? The semi evergreen for forests are found in the less rainier part of the of this region that is surrounding the evergreen forest but pe you will get less rainy less rainfall you will find semi evergreen trees so this are this this forests are found in the regions receiving receiving around 200 to 250 centimeters of average annual rain of annual rainfall. So what is the point you should remember? 200 to 500 centimeters of average annual rainfall. So even this region have high relative humidity, even this region have, have high temperature but the rainfall is between 200 to 250 centimeters. Now this regions have the a mixture of evergreen and the moist deciduous tree. These are the mixture of evergreen and moist deciduous trees. And the moist deciduous trees. Now, where are they found? These are found again. These are found in the Western Ghat region. They are found. You do not have to do much. What I am doing is more than enough. This is. These are found in the Western Ghat region. These are found in the Eastern Himalayas. That is the lower part of the Eastern Himalaya. Remember what we are doing only the Eastern Himalayas, Western Himalayas that is the state of Jammu Kashmir, Uttarakhand, 
himachal pradesh do not get a heavy rainfall so not in that region so they are found in the eastern himalayas in the andaman and nicobar islands is not kerala beautiful it is known as is it not or is it it is very beautiful the next our favorite destination is andaman nicobar islands many people want to go to the northeast india maybe they go or do not go that is a different question but beauty in india natural beauty we say himalayas but which eastern himalayas more if you want to talk about the dense vegetation but if you want to see the bare slopes of the mountains then it is the western himalayas what i am saying bare slopes of mighty himalayas western himalayas natural vegetation eastern himalayas then western ghat region itself is rich in natural vegetation you have many hill stations right from lonawala khandala to uti to annamalai to kur to the kurg region to the munnar region then you the the, the the one of the most important destination is andaman nicobar islands now when i say this three regions it means green so evergreen and the semi evergreen forest of this region so why is this green because of the evergreen and the semi evergreen forest of this region yaha also there are epiphytes because there is a presence of evergreen trees and yaha also there is a presence there is there is a presence of bamboo so the important species in this region is the important species in this region is bamboo then the other important species is in this region is white cedar white cedar so white cedar semi evergreen forest repeat with me white cedar semi evergreen forest rosewood mahogany ebony then evergreen forest ebony mahogany all this which are ending with y remember evergreen forest white cedar is the semi evergreen forest region and the other is hollock and hill hollock and hill hollock and hill now how to remember this yahan pe there is no shortcut to remember remember bamboo can grow in deciduous in the evergreen so bamboo will be present everywhere remember white cedar hollock and kel are of semi evergreen that means the upsc can ask you question that where in which state is the white cedar found you remember any state of northeast india where will be the kel found the states of the northeast india so this are the regions where you will find this region now in ncert there is a word which is given that the britishers were aware of the economic value of this forest and therefore in the kumau gadwal region of uttarakhand they cleared this forest and they replaced this region by chir by pine for the construction and they also introduced the coffee plantations tea plantations in the northeast india by clearing this forest region so don't worry about this too much remember one important species which is found in this region is is mango is also found in this region mango is also found in this region now mango is found in this region but mango is a, is found everywhere so i do not generally like to remember mango because mango is found in even in the deciduous forest region so a question especially on mango won't come so what about semi evergreen and evergreen forest these are the forests which are found in the regions of very heavy rainfall semi evergreen is the mixture of evergreen and the moist deciduous important species here are rosewood ebony mahogany in kerala region if the question comes in which region of india that is in which state of india you will find a carnivorous plant if one option is kerala second option is andhra pradesh third option is 
is uh, is Haryana and the fourth option is West Bengal. So you know where? Pitcher plant, evergreen forest region, evergreen forest region, region of very heavy rainfall and that region of very heavy rainfall is the Kerala region. So you will have to answer it this way. What is kya khasiyat hai yahan ki? Presence of climbers or epiphytes is the important characteristics of this forest. Now let us come to the next forest that is the deciduous type of a forest. Deciduous type of a forest. So the deciduous type of a forest again the tropical deciduous forests are found tropical deciduous forest Now there are two ways of the tropical deciduous forest. One is moist deciduous and other is the dry deciduous forest region. I will continue in the next lecture. Let me take a break. So I will continue in this next lecture and we will again repeat it. Thank you very much.